Well, hello. Oh, my goodness. Hang on a minute. I just, I just shrunk myself down so little I can't find myself. <laughs> I wish it was that easy in real life. <laughs> okay, I'm back. All right. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to today's video on Holy Week. It's Holy Week Tuesday already, and um. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Reverend Alicia Leslie from Spirit of Unity Church Online Ministry. Uh, I'm located in Moodis, Connecticut. I do videos pretty much every day as a way of bringing to you my uh, message from a mundane mystic. What's a mundane mystic? It's someone who looks at the principles at work in our lives and then shares them. So we take the mundane, the everyday, and we look at it through the eyes of spirit, of God, of spiritual principle, and teach it to others. So that's what this is all about. And today we are on Holy Week Tuesday, and what we're looking at is preaching the teaching. This is also a part of my uh, current series on embracing change. We all change, whether we like it or not, <laughs> and whether we um, uh, want to or not. And speaking of which, you'll probably see a change in me today, that there's a knock a blush in my cheeks, that <laughs> there's no lipstick. I tried to find it real quick and I couldn't. So you get me today, I'm not sure. So here I am. And of course, um, in this series, we're looking every day at things we can do to change and make our lives better and to be okay with change. A lot of people don't like change and that's okay. You're probably not going to stop it. I really kind of feel sorry for like the um, the movie stars, the people that see what they look like as what gives them value. Because what gives us value is not so much how we look as who we are. Now, do not misunderstand me. It is always uh, nice to look our best. I would have liked to have put on a little bit of makeup before today, but I've had a very busy day, and so um, I had to prioritize. And I figure you will either love me as I am or you won't love me at all. So here I am, and I hope my message <laughs> will overcome the fact that I was not prepared today. Why was I not prepared today? Number one, I went to get my second booster shot for COVID. And uh, that was important to me because I really, really want this thing beaten. I want it to be overpowered and go away. Um, you know, and, and here's a part. Well, I'll hang on a minute. I guess I can't make a note. I don't have a pencil. I'll try to remember to go back to that later because I want to share more about what I just said and where's the truth in that. Um, but first, we have to get to the National Day calendar. Isn't that a part of the fun of doing our daily videos? Well, today, this is, uh, had many, many National Days we're celebrating. And one of them is Only Child Day. Did you know that since 1970 till now, the number of families with only one child has doubled? I thought that was pretty interesting because I know very few only children. And I'm really, really, you know, uh, I, I know that they have their benefits. There's benefits to being an only child. There's benefits to having siblings. And there's annoyances to being an only child. And there's annoyances to being uh, uh, having siblings. Now, the, um, the one thing is, again, when we apply the metaphysics to this, 
we understand that we we receive that which we have and we do the best with it. Now, some people would bemoan the fact that they were an only child, while others would say, shoot, I wish I was an only child. My siblings were a pain in the neck. I don't think I'd ever want to be a single, you know, an only child. And uh, yet the only kid doesn't have to fight anybody for the parent's attention. And uh, it's on both sides. But we honor to those today who are only children because their life experience is very different than ours. Uh, let's see. It is also Education Sharing Day. National Education and Sharing Day. That's something to share about that today. That's not necessarily the the greatest. First of all, I would like to say that this fits in perfectly with today's topic, preaching the teaching, and uh, what's happening in our schools and people that are trying to impose <coughs> their translation of standards on everyone else. Sorry about that. Um, there, I saw something on the news today that at this particular school, I think in Texas, <coughs> excuse me, Tickle, they were supposed to have a guest author in today. He wrote a book. And the book was titled, I think, It's Okay to Be a Unicorn. And it had, you know, pictures of of a unicorn and playing with other animals. I'm very sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. Go away, tickle. <coughs> okay. And um, the unicorn had the, you know, they have the horn on the head and it was like a rainbow. Well, of course, many people immediately decide that that's not good because it might point out the transgender issue, the <coughs> LGBTQ, you know, that whole piece. Um, and it, that that's really brings me up to the, the thing about why are they making such an issue? You know, remember, morality is exposed. It's not. You cannot impose it. There's a difference between force and power. And each one of us are powerful spiritual beings. So when we see that this book, they were so afraid, the school was so afraid to get in trouble for inviting this author, they canceled the presentation. They banned the book from school. They got it out of the school. Why? Because it was teaching that it's okay to be different. How can they, how can our children be okay with being different because each one of us is? And I used to think I was weird. Then I found out I'm not weird. I'm unique. There's only one of me. And it's a pretty fun one of me. And if you don't like it, sorry about that, you miss out. We are each unique. And you know, kids tend to they tend to um, make fun of other kids that aren't like them. And, and it's hell to go to school for some of those. And so, you know, I, I think about the people that I've known over my life that were, I don't know, they might gay, trans, whatever, any of the LGBTQ, they were there. But nobody talked about it and nobody mentioned it and everybody did their lives and everybody was happy. We had two women that were a couple uh, that lived down the street from me. Now, this is the time, from the time I was a small child. It was Casey and Nancy. And they were delightful older women, late middle age maybe. Well, they probably went from middle age to late middle age in the time I was there growing up. And they were great. Nobody made fun of them. Nobody pointed out their life choices. And nobody did anything. Why can't we live like that? Why can't we live as we're meant to live together. Why can't we? Because of us. Hmm. Somebody's got to be out there preaching and teaching a different way. Guess who that is? It's you. 
We'll talk about that more in a minute. Okay, it is also, um, this is funny, it is Grilled Cheese Day, National Grilled Cheese Day, and I already, before I even knew it was Grilled Cheese Day, I was planning on grilled cheese for supper with homemade tomato soup. I can't even tell you how easy it is to make, but it's so easy to make wonderful tomato soup, and so that's what my supper is going to be, and you might want to think about it, quick and easy supper. Now, my friend Ellen taught me a way to make cheese that it, grilled cheese that is fantastic. You know, I a lot of us are trying to watch our weight, and uh, some aren't, and good for you. I remember the day when I could not put on a pound any way I wanted to. It just wasn't happening, but that's not the case anymore. Anyway, what she taught me was that you take uh, a toaster oven and put in a piece of bread or two, whatever, how much you want. You put the bread in the toaster oven and start to toast it a little bit. And when it starts to, it starts to pick up a little color, you pull it out, put a squiggle of mustard on it, put a slice of Munster cheese on top of that, and back into the toaster oven, and the cheese gets melty on top. And it's, you know, you don't use all that butter that you use to make a regular grilled cheese, and Munster cheese has got a nice body to it, so maybe you want to think about that for supper. A nice open uh, toasted cheese, uh, Munster cheese sandwich with some homemade tomato soup. Open a can if you have to. So, that's what day it is there today. And oh, I have to always point out my 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 daughter's um, ex husband was in the navy for many many years, and he used to share how they made grilled cheese, which was to put bread on you know butter on two sides of bread, put the bread side out, put cheese inside, and put it in a little bit of foil, put it on the ironing board, and iron it. <laughs> With a clothes iron, turn that baby up and iron it right through the. Uh, that, that, so I guess that's another way to make a grilled cheese, but I'm not doing that. Um, it is for Twelves Day. It's about honoring the number twelve and how many ways we use that number. We use it to measure. We use it in the signs of the zodiac and the planets and the houses. Um, we use it to measure products by the dozen. So there's many, many ways that 12s in unity, we have what is called the 12 powers. And those are 12 um, spiritual gifts or um, faculties that we've each been blessed with. Um, not unlike the chakras where these are located, there's what they call power centers located in the different parts of your body. You can look up the 12 powers of man, which was written by Charles Fillmore, and you can look that up and get yourself a copy and uh, get some real light about that. Okay, and so now we are out of National Day calendar things. I hope you got some good thoughts in there and how to take those Take what you get from those days, what you give from those days, and apply them into your life as they fit, as they work. So we're talking today about preaching the teaching. It is very important for us to speak our truth and to speak our truth with love. We want to have confidence in what we truly, truly believe. If we don't have confidence in what we, we don't really know what we believe or why, I will refer you back to my book, Rise of the False Gods, which has a chapter on it on your credo. The word credo means I believe. And until you really understand what you believe, I don't know how you could even live it. Because when I was in the Catholic Church, and I'm not knocking the Catholic Church, I got a lot of good stuff out of that, so please don't mishear me. But when I was in the Catholic Church, there was a lot of stuff that did not go with what I believed in my heart and soul. 
it's one of the reasons <clears throat> excuse me I eventually had to leave I had but but it was basically because I found unity and I couldn't match that with anything because everything I heard resonated with what I believe now that's me so I'm not saying that that has to be the only thing for you would I tell you to check it out absolutely it changed my life for the better could it change your life depends you does it appeal to you does it work for you does it speak truth for you once I knew the unity teaching I could not help but share that with everyone now when you share <laughs> your truth with everyone you got to be real careful that can be a turn off they can walk away you know you can easily shine a beautiful glow light at 40 watts but if you turn that light up to 120, you're going to have people closing their eyes and backing up and getting away. So preaching the teaching. Now, so am I telling you here that it must be the unity teaching that you're teaching? No, I'm, I'm trying to teach you that it is important to share your core beliefs and to support them in the people you hang around with and the things that you do. Um, if you associate with a bunch of people that really aren't, aren't sharing your same core beliefs and values, you're going to be very uncomfortable. And you may try and try to, to reach their standard, you know, to do what they, to, to be what they want you to be instead of what you want to be. Um, Uno momento, I need a tissue. Um, as I'm speaking to you, I'll give you a little heads up of what's going on with me. You know, it was just um, a little over a week ago that I lost Tishy. And if you see that, eh, that blue container behind me, it's Tishy. You know, she loved so much coming up and sitting on my lap when I did my videos and and howling in the background. <laughs> and um, so today she is at, she is with me back there on the shelf. So um, I don't know how long I'm going to keep her there, but I want to free her at one point in time. But anyway, let's get, let's get back. I, I I get off track very easily. So, um, okay, first of all, you want to know what you believe so that you actually can speak your truth. Now, this is in every area of life. A lot of times we say things, we, a lot of times we might base um, our beliefs of the moment on assumptions, on what you heard on the news, on whatever. If you don't apply critical thinking to it and think it out and why you believe that or won't believe that or should or shouldn't believe it, um, you have to you have to get to the why. And once you get to the why, you have to share that. You know, in uh, one of the reasons I wrote my book, Rise of the False Gods, was because I kept saying, God. I wish more people understood these principles. I wish more people understood these principles. And uh, I said that for about four years. And uh, write a book, write a book. Finally, I got it and I wrote the book. Do you find that in you? Do you find sometimes you ask yourself, why, why do people act like that? How can people believe like that? Okay, let's talk straight here. Um, there are so many untruths in in uh, our government that it is it's 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 a shame um, it's very hard there's crazy crazy lies and and this whole bit with um, imposing your beliefs on me um, telling me what books I can or cannot have in my children's school when they are not the educators the educators job is to educate and they're to educate facts and truth and, and exchange knowledge. Knowledge, not opinions. There's a big difference between knowledge and opinions. Okay. So, um, one of the things I truly, truly believe 
is your life is your gospel. Remember, the word gospel means good news. When you approach people, when you talk to people, what news do they get? Now, when I say news, what do they get about you? What are you saying about your life, your, what you, you believe? You know, remember we talked a little bit the other day about, maybe we didn't, about you have to work hard for a living. No, you don't. When you find the right occupation, whether it's ditch digging or, you know, being a, a big executive, um, whatever you do when your work is play, you play all day. No, you do not have to work hard for a living. Another one is you do not have to, have to um, what is the word they used to say? Keep up with the Joneses. You don't have to keep up with the Joneses. Let the Joneses worry about themselves. You don't know what's going on in their life. So what, what do you believe about life? When people see you, now I have a friend, and I, I, I do love her, but um, I just had to stop hanging around with her because the minute you'd see her, you go, hey, how you going? And she goes, you wouldn't believe it. Oh, my God, what so-and-so has done now. Oh, blah, 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 blah. No, I couldn't handle that. Do they think that when you come? Or do you think, like they probably think when they see me coming, oh, God, will she ever shut up? <laughs> I try to track myself on that, make sure the other people get to talk. Um, but, I mean... So everything you talk to them about, whether it's about your kids, whether it's about food you ate, a restaurant you went to, um, ask yourself, is this, is this a wonderful light I'm sharing? Am I helping people to feel better and, and be excited? Am I positive? And, you know, we catch ourselves not being so positive all the time. Sometimes we're expressing things and we catch ourselves. And the best thing you do when you catch yourself is to admit it. Oh, wait a minute. I, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sure I've said that to you before. You know, you find out you're going off on a toot about something, and all of a sudden you go, whoa, that's not positive. That's not where I want to go. That's not what I want to teach people about life. Well, you are teaching people about life every day in everything you think do and say it eventually comes out of your mouth one way or the other so how do we you know in the bible it says so first of all we want to remember this is this is important when mary and martha were down at the tomb and uh jumping ahead here to easter morning and uh and they ran it they found jesus and um he said go Go and tell the others. So Jesus sent people to share the good news. So think about being a sharer of good news. If you're in a conversation, it starts to go south, you want to turn it around, think of some good news. If someone says, for example, I can't believe the the um phones are so expensive those iphones and oh my god you have to spend so much money and blah, 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 blah. then you might say well you know what you can change your plan you can cut down on the amount amount of hours and stuff you know or those kids i can't get them off of the off of their phones they they have no respect yeah you can but imagine hey why don't you have a a family hour and during family hour, everybody puts their phones aside, out of reach. Nobody can answer their phone for an hour, and you just enjoy each other's company. Don't go blaming the phones for making your life miserable. Don't go blaming politics for making your life miserable. You can, believe it or not, you can discuss politics without getting into a fight. Um... If you speak your truth with love and know that you're not going to change anyone else's mind. Long as you ask in advance, we have respect in both directions. Okay? 
there are just so many assumptions out there. Isn't it awful that so-and-so did this, that so-and-so did that? We have to ask ourselves, okay, if we try to find the what is behind that, remember? We look at the, oh, the what is the word and the why is the heart. So the letter and the heart of the law. So if we are looking at why, why is it? Why is it that those gas prices are up? Hey, you know, it's all Biden's fault. No, it's not. It's so-and-so's fault. Well, hello. Let's get to the bottom of it. If you don't know what you're talking about, don't talk. If you do know what you're talking about, speak your truth with love and fact. And here's another thing. Why are we so dependent? Why do we use so much oil and gas? Why do we drive high-powered vehicles that suck up gas as if it was free? Then complain about the price? There are so many things that we can do to turn things around to be more positive. Today I'm talking about inviting you to be the gospel of good news that you have to share. Great way to prepare yourself for that every day is a gratitude list that you write down, you know, five things you're grateful for and why and when you do that and you go and you hear somebody complaining about something you can say yeah but you know with losing tish that just um <clears throat> really is sad she was my companion for 22 years since my granddaughter moved away and uh left her with me because she loved me and she wanted me to have a companion and then I, it was Tishy and me. And then when my granddaughter passed away, and that was one more part of my family missing. And then my great-grandson moved, and that was another piece of my family missing. And I could, I could just tell you how horrible it is and how life isn't worth living and it's not fair and they shouldn't have died and they shouldn't have moved and things should have been different. You know what? You have to be thankful for what you have. I thank God for every minute I had with Sammy. I thank God for the Wednesdays and Sundays, which were our routine for supper and TV and, and playing and stuff like that, for going up to the pool. Yeah, it's not a part of my daily life now, but that doesn't mean it wasn't real. Now, another way that I think is a, it's called metaphysical malpractice, and there's many ways of it. When somebody um, loses, a, a, very often, a child or a pet, and this is, this is something people have said to me repeatedly since I lost Tish, um, so are you going to get another cat? You're going to get another kitten? And I say, no. First of all, Tish was about the most perfect cat in the world. <laughs> Why would I take a chance on another one? And she was my family, and she was Tish, and she's not replaceable. I know that you think you're helping the person feel better, but you're not. That goes back to helping to, to help people. When you speak your truth with love, you help them heal as well. For example, when somebody just says, uh, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, you lost your pet. I, I know how much you love her. And, and even if somebody says, yeah, I, I had a cat for X number of years and, and he or she did this and that and we had a great relationship and then I lost them. And so we want to teach people right ways of things, not wrong ways. Things like, um, you know, uh, if you wind up divorced and you think you've got to get married right away again. You've got to find someone. I'm going to be honest. That was me. <coughs> Excuse me. When my first marriage ended, let's see. I think I went to court in August for the divorce and the following May I remarried. 
not the brightest thing I ever did. So no, it's better if someone loses a relationship instead of telling them there's going to be another one down the road, which there is. They want to be encouraged to know they're going to be just fine on their own. You know, some people uh, have accused me of not liking men because I'll say things like a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. <laughs> it's, it's not meant to be cruel. It's meant to say you'll be fine on your own. And if we don't love ourselves first, I don't know that we can find someone to fill the void in our heart and soul of self-love. And when you get self-love, you make better choices. So if you want to, as we are called to, preach our, you know, uh, preach the teaching, uh, we have to know what we believe. So you want to spend time in prayer and meditation. You want to read. Read spiritual books. Read the Bible. Say, what does that mean? Uh, find inspiring preachers and teachers to listen to. Spend daily time in prayer and meditation. Do your inner work. Do your gratitude list. Here's another good one. Good old WWJD. In case a lot of you are out there too young to remember it. <laughs> Big deal in the 80s. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus tell naughty jokes around the lunch table? Would Jesus lie? Would Jesus push for a promotion, climbing up the ladder, even if he had to step on other people's heads? Hmm. What would Jesus say? Ooh, that's a tough one because we can be mighty petty sometimes, right? But what a joy when we start to grow past it. We have to understand that we are just like everyone else. That God loves us all. God loves that person who tap dances on your last nerve. God loves both political parties. Oh, no, there's about five of them. God loves all political parties in their purest essence, which is to represent the people for the highest good. Now, that doesn't mean that all members of all political parties are thinking that way, and some are actually very hurtful. But I want to share something you don't want to know. They are some of your most important teachers because they teach you how one is not working correctly, how one could work correctly, what not to do, and what you have to work toward turning around. We got a lot of work out there to do. We have been sent. Jesus said, go. Share this truth. Be that light. Your light <clears throat> is no better than anybody else's is. But when you shine your light bright enough, you will draw to you those who need to see your light. For me, the unity teaching that I love so much is a way that I can hopefully help others to learn to shine, to follow the good teaching. And it's okay. Huh, I want to make sure I didn't uh, miss anything. 
um, yeah, some people will avoid you. They'll either think you think you're holier than than ever, you know, holier than thou. Uh, they may be uh, afraid because they feel guilt if they're not being accountable and you talk about accountability. Because integrity and accountability, don't be afraid to speak of those things. Speak your truth with love. Remember how Jesus told hard truths? There once was a man. It's called Parable. And he told stories. Fictional. True stories? Maybe not. True stories? Yes. Because they demonstrated the principles. Your life is your greatest demonstration of what you believe. If you find yourself betraying that teaching, if you believe thou shalt not lie, you should not lie, and you lie, nah, you're not preaching, you're teaching. You got a teacher preaching and preacher teaching. And on that note, I shall let you be free for the day. And hopefully I will see you tomorrow and we will explore our Wednesday topic. For now, God bless you good and have a bright, beautiful, better than average day. Bye-bye.